All right. For starters, this is the Utah Ute. T H E U T H U T E E. Just one E. <laughs> It'll make you remember, though, hopefully. But, anyways, today I'm going to walk through some archetypes and some easy ways to tell how to swing based off of the lie, the elevation, the wind and then your putting as well as your skills and your archetype. So I wanna start with your archetype. This is for PGA 2K23. As you can see here, there are five different archetypes that you can select for your golfer. I recommend that you start here at archetype and figure out your style of play. This is just my first video, I'm going to do another one. This archetype setup that I have is for Woodsman. This is what I currently use in my career, as well as online ranked play. Woodsman, if we go down to it, the strength is recovery shots. Sorry, by the way, I'm on my phone, so it's gonna be all shaky. Um, I don't have quite the setup yet, but this is just an initial video. The weakness is putting. So one thing I would recognize here is what your strength is and what your weakness is. Because that's going to play a key role into where you are putting your skills. So this is for the Woodsman Archetype. It's a pretty good one. If you are really, really struggling with putting, I do not recommend it. But putting, I think, is... Once you... Once I tell you... Um, how to putt on here and how to use the metrics, it's gonna be a lot more helpful. So let's go from Woodsman, which is the archetype. Let's go over to skills. So this is how I have my skills set up right now. I'm actually about to adjust something. It takes 500 skill points to hold, to reset. So what that basically means, when I first saw that, I thought it just resetted one skill point for 500 points. No, it resets the whole skill setup that you've created. And then you have to start all over with the skill points that you've currently had. 50 skill points is the top that you can get. I have zero remaining because they're all in use. So the skills that I'm going to go through, let's bring out the notebook. I'd recommend taking a screenshot of this. The skills, my driver, I have skill number two with three, five with three, six with three, seven with three. That just basically means the column that they're in, in the chart. I'm taking away my woods number seven. That's the active skill that's always active because I'm gonna use just utilities and irons and try that setup out. I was trying just woods with no utilities, but it's a little bit harder that way, just because I need a little bit more skills to go towards my putter. And so I'm gonna take out that wood skill, and since there's no skills in wood, it won't be in my bag. So that is those skills right there. All right, let's get into the fun stuff, the stuff that you guys actually care about. So this is PGA 2K23. These are estimated shots. I mean, everything isn't perfect, but these are, I'd say 85 to 90% of the time they work. Um, my putting, I was just missing maybe an inch or two below the hole at really side sloped shot putts. Um, up above the hole a couple inches, but this kind of dialed it in and then also helps with these are your normal shots so This does not include pitching punching flop shots Chipping any of that just normal shots. So the lie percentage So what you do is in the top right corner It's gonna show your lie percentage that basically means how the ball is sitting down in either the rough, on the fairway, etc. So on the fairway, you're going to be at 98 to 100% every single time. In the heavy rough, you're going to be probably anywhere between high 50s to maybe high 70s for the most part. 
But what you do is you take the percentage of the lie, you minus 100, and it'll give you a negative number, but you're gonna add one yard for every 1% of lie that you're below 100. So let's say that you're at an 80% lie. You're gonna want to add 20 yards to that shot. Does that make sense? So 20 yards because 80% minus 100 equals 20. And for every 1% lie, that equals one yard that you have to add in addition to your shot. And you have to do all of these combined. I just do them in my head. Um, it's pretty basic math once you understand the concept. So just study this and just keep practicing it. Keep it by your side when you're playing my career or just practicing. Um, let's get into wind. So the wind speed. If it's a side wind, you're gonna add yardage. So you times the wind speed by 1.25 on average. So if it's right to left, if it's left to right, a little bit of a headwind, a little bit of a tailwind. I mean, if you wanna get technical, you could adjust a little bit of a percentage based off of head and tailwind. I'm just basically sticking kind of average. So if you have a six mile an hour, Let's actually do, let's say a four mile an hour wind, just because it makes the math easier. So four mile an hour wind coming across the fairway from right to left, you're gonna add five yards to that shot with a four mile an hour crosswind. Because you take the four miles an hour, you times it by 1.25, and that's how much you need to add in yardage. The wind speed, a lot of people say to do 1.5, you can do 1.5. I find that 1.4 is a little bit more accurate with a headwind. So a headwind is when the wind is blowing at you. So let's say you have a 10 mile an hour headwind, you would times that by 1.4 and you'd add 14 yards to your shot. And then in reverse, with the tailwind, you're gonna times that by 1.3 average. So if you have a 10 mile an hour tailwind, a wind blowing from your back towards your shot, so in front of you, if it's 10 miles an hour, you're gonna times that by 1.3, so you'd have 13 yards. This is the only part that it's different. Instead of adding 13 yards to the shot, since it's a tailwind, you're gonna take 13 yards off. I do know that I did skip elevation. I think the way I do it is I look at the lie first. I mean, obviously if it's set up below your feet, it's gonna most of the time come out left to right, give you a fade. If the ball's above your feet, it's gonna give you a hook or a draw where you're gonna pull it right to left. And this is for right-handed hitters. And after you get your lie down, you're gonna calculate wind, and then you're gonna calculate the elevation. So let's say it is up 10 feet. So it says that in elevation, the ball is up 10 feet. You're gonna divide 10 feet by three, which comes out to be about 3.33333. And you're gonna add 3.3 yards more for it being uphill. Now if it's down, you're gonna do basically the same. So if it's 10 feet down, you're gonna divide that by three, you're gonna get 3.3 yards, and you're gonna hit 3.3 yards less because it's downhill instead of uphill. And again, these are for normal shots, Mostly irons, wedges, woods, utilities, drivers, um, and those are your shots. Let's get into a little bit of putting. Sorry, I know I'm going through everything kind of a little bit fast, and I do want to make some videos that actually implement this strategy so you can see that it truly does work and you know what I'm talking about and not just crazy. I'm a little bit crazy, but this actually does work. 
So putting, you're gonna use the grid. So each side movement line, so you're gonna see a grid in front of you and the hole, and there are squares on the green. And then there are highlighted grid markers moving right to left, or they're moving left to right. You're gonna add two inches to the opposite side those grid markers are moving for every line. So say you have four lines in front of you, each one of the lines is going right to left. On average, you're gonna add two inches to the right of the putt for every grid marker. So that's eight inches total. Since you have four grid markers going right to left, you're gonna add about eight inches to the right of the hole for that putt. And that's for the direction per one meter grid movement. Those grids are actually in meters. I'm doing this in yards, but two inches per grid line is a general average, which is like I mentioned earlier, about 85 to 90% accurate. So the down and up slope distance, the way I play it, I mean, there's just way too many variables with how far down, how far up, has the ball breaking. I mean, even the wind has a slight effect on the putt, but basically I'm an uphill aggressive putter, so I'm not gonna play into the break as much uphill, and I'm gonna putt it a little bit harder than recommended to make sure that I stay on my line and I hit the hole. The reason I like to do that is that way I'm never short. I always give my ball a chance to go into the hole but on top of that, your second shot, if you do miss the hole, it's uphill, so it's going to slow down and stop so you can make your second putt and be a good two putter. And downhill, I putt with caution. I mean, unless it's like a must have, like the last shot, you need a birdie, you have a birdie putt, super long, and you just want to be aggressive, like I can understand those situations. But downhill, I putt with caution. So I'm going to take off the distance that it wants me to hit by a few inches to, I mean, even sometimes a few feet and play a lot more break and play that slope. So you have to aim a little bit more than the two inch movement, right to left or left to right. And then the wind has a slight effect. I like, it really isn't too much, maybe an inch per 10 miles an hour if even, um, with like a side wind, say it's blown right to left, 20 miles an hour, maybe add two inches to the right, because that wind really isn't gonna affect the ball on the putting surface. That is what we have for today. I hope you guys tune in to the Utah Ute. I'm gonna be posting a lot of videos about PGA 2K23. I'd love to answer any of your questions Feel free to message in the video comments. Please like, share, um, and I would just love to answer any of the questions that you have and help you out with your game. You can definitely add me on PlayStation. It is T-H-E-U-T-A-H-U-T-E, -E, the Utah Ute. Some of my gamer tags are just Utah Ute without the, but add me on there. And uh, we can go through a couple practice rounds or just play some ranked duos and I can help you with your shot. All right. Thanks. Have a great day.